Hi guys, um, welcome back. Um, wanted to do a quick video here at Nat's uh, garden shop. Um, as you can see, we've got quite a quite a few plants in, and she's waiting for a couple more deliveries to restock on uh, a few other things that's been sold out or run down. And it's pretty big. Um, we are obviously right on the main road here, uh, which is currently being extended, as I mentioned in a couple of videos. Uh, this is the main road um, between the two towns, or the one town and our town, and the, the city. So we get a lot of passing traffic. Um, we don't get a, a great deal of customers at the moment uh, because of the road construction, but she gets quite a fair few. And a lot of people are now starting to ask us, how do we water everything? So we did have a manual sprinkler system originally, but it wasn't really sufficient for the size of the place. Um, we have probably around 10 sprinklers on each row, each individual row. Um, and we probably put out uh, a power, I think now. If I ran two rows for 10 minutes, um, it would be 20 sprinklers. We would probably be putting up close on three and a half thousand liters of water. Now, a lot of that does get wasted, fair dues, um, but it's the kind of level that we need to, to water everything. Um, so it's, it's quite a lot. Ah, I just see in the background there, the one row is actually popped on. So, so just running back through this, um, we, we didn't have enough water supply to maintain the level of water that we were doing. So we had to adjust. Now, I, I came across a couple of tanks. Um, we bought these two tanks, um, which are 2,000 meters each. And they were running into very, very quickly. So we ran out of hours in the daytime to water everything properly. So we had to adjust further. So what I did was, I went onto the internet, um, had a look around locally to see if there's anything I can use. Um, unfortunately, the stuff here in Thailand was just not quite suitable, not quite big enough um, for what I wanted for the expansion. Um, just to let you know, I've got I've got 12, 12 rows at the moment. Um, or 12 zones but I have three four zones which I haven't used so we, well, which we, we use we use um, manually so I came across this uh, little device I eventually went on to Amazon and I came across this little device made by Rachio okay so this is the Ratio third generation uh, controller. Now this is the big boy. This is the one with 16 zones. They had a couple others, um, but I chose to go with this one purely because it's Wi-Fi. Um, we don't stay here at the garden shop. We have internet here, but we don't live here. We actually just look after the place through the daytime and then we go home to our place. Uh, so we needed something that we can control remotely to attach to the phone. And this one came out trumps. So inside, this is the one that we've got. Just show you guys what we've got. Okay, so I, I wired it all up. Now, that's the one I've got there. Now, Ratio don't make the transformers to suit Thailand. So I had to adjust further with that. And I managed to come across another transformer um, that does the right output with the different input. So I went with this one. Because of a fail safe and the pump that I'm using is not automatic, it 
nothing immediately. It doesn't come on as soon as I turn the valve on uh, and go off as soon as I turn the valve off. I actually have to turn the pump on manually. So I did a little bit more digging around and I came around a couple of other bits and pieces. And I put in this button here, which is a timer. As you can see, the little red light is on. It's saying that the pump is turned on. It's got the pump that is giving the power to the pump. Now, a fail safe as well, because obviously, Nat will probably want to water plants through the day when the sprinklers aren't turned on. So we needed another option where the, the timer for the pump is bypassed. So I came up with another little bypass switch. Now this one here works in the way that, if I just focus properly, I turn off the one valve, I turn off the one switch and turn on the other switch. It bypasses the timer and it gives power direct to the pump. And if I turn it off the other way around, I have to turn one off and turn the other one on. It won't just both be turned on or both be turned off. So it's a kind of fail safety. Um, and then I obviously put in my breaker to the box here as well. To, so breaker gives the power supply direct to the, oh, if I do it right, to the transformer, which powers the, the controller, and then to the timer switch, and then a bypass cable follows down to the bypass switch. Um, all my cables, I'll show you the valves in a few minutes, um, all my cables run from each zone. So I have here, I have about 600 meters, 600 meters of cabling. It all runs back into this box, yeah. So each one of these blue lines runs into each zone. And then the, the controller then turns off the zone or turns on the zone and opens the solenoid valve at the, the sprinkler line and it turns it on. So these are the, the direct ones and then we've got a common which is in here or the brown line comes in comes into this little bus box okay nice and tidy it goes into the bus box each individual one and then a single cable from here which is a slightly larger one runs back down the way and feeds into the controller. Now, Ratio do actually provide the, the cut-on um, automatic side for the pump to turn the pump on. I decided not to go with that option purely because we need to use the pump as well through the daytime. So, Ratio, thanks very much for that but it's not suitable for us, okay? We decided not to do it that way. Um, we needed to, to run it the other way because through the daytime, we need to use the pump as well. So we need to have a kind of bypass there. Um, and not only that, being Wi-Fi, um, if I don't have, I suppose if I have the Wi-Fi and, and run it through here, then I could turn it on anytime from anywhere. But um, in this instance, it doesn't actually work well for us. So I'm not doing a, a review of the Raccio at the moment. I'm showing what I have bought and what I'm using it for. And, and because people are asking me uh, all about the the sprinklers and how we manage it and how we look after everything so there you go guys it's the ratio and it's the third generation uh, 16 zone sprinkler controller wi-fi controller it's pretty handy um, all in this little box and um, got a lock on there later um, so that's all the cables running down so let's follow the cables and see exactly where they go to um, 
quite a big big shop here. We have um, this land is called Four Rye um, in Thai measurements. It's Four Rye, which which equates to about one and a half acres. Now we're not utilizing all of that land for the shop. We are using about half of it. So you can get a, some understanding just how big we really are here. We've done it so we have a lot of customers. Now the first line I'm gonna show you is running back to the pump. As I said earlier, the pump is not automatic. Um, we need to cut the grass down here as well, actually. It's a bit long. It's not automatic, so it doesn't come on when you turn it on. So that's the simple pump that I'm using. It's a one horsepower uh, centrifugal pump. It comes on via power direct on and off. It pumps in through a one and a half inch line and it pumps out through a one and a half inch line. Uh, that's the pump settings. Uh, I, what I've done is I've ran the cable to here and it then feeds the, the pump from here. And I've done something else um, to make things easier for us. I have bought one of these little things. Now this is a digital pump switch. Now what happens here is it's got an on and an off. Uh, once, because the type of pump we're using is not pressurized, it doesn't provide pressure as well as normal tank uh, pumps do. There's no pressure tank in this one. So it doesn't give us pressure, it gives us super volume. This pump will pump out at 275 liters per minute if it's got enough water attached to it. I consider 4,000 liters of water in storage tanks right beside the pump enough to pump out 275 liters a minute. It's more than enough, but we don't use that much, um, or we could. So this, this little switch here, it'll cut in as soon as pressure drops below a certain level and it'll cut the pump off once the, the, the pressure goes up slightly. Um, I've set it at going off at one, at two, two bar. So the pump turns itself off at two bar. And then once it reaches 1.5 bar, it turns on. It never varies beyond that. I've seen on the odd occasion it goes up to 2.2. I try to set the pump switch to 2.2. On occasions it doesn't maintain that and then the pump comes on and off, on and off, on and off, and which we do not want. I've also fitted in this uh, little pressure switch, pressure gauge, sorry. It's just something just to double check what pressure I'm getting through the, the switch. Um, as you can see there, uh, just focus a little bit better. There you go. Bit of grass in the way. So that's my setup here. And these pumps are filled via a two inch borehole. Um, these two tanks, sorry, are filled via a two inch borehole. And the pump comes across through a one inch line and then fills up these two tanks. Um, it drops down to a three quarter, but it's most of it's uh, one inch all the way here. It's not enough water filling up at the same time as what's going out. So I do have another problem. They, they are balanced. They've got a, a two inch line here. So when one fills, the other fills at the same time. It's a level thing. It's a, um, how, how it fills up, if you don't know that. I, I've, I've had times when the pump, the, the tanks have run dry, um, not from putting the sprinklers in, but before, and we rushed to turn off the, the pump. So what I've done is I've put in another safety cutoff. This little thing here is a safety switch. If the tanks inside, it's got two 
little cords uh, weighted. If the tanks go down too far, I think I set it to about this level here from the ground, um, still leaves enough water there, then it cuts off the pump. Whatever's running, it turns the pump off. We don't want that pump to run dry. We will burn that pump out. So how does it turn back on? The water's got to get up to about just over a half. When the water gets up to just over a half, that little switch there kicks back on. And then the pump is allowed to turn on. That then allows electricity to flow through to the pressure switch and then into the, into the pump. That's how that works. Um, Nat has come, come up a couple of times and said, oh, there's no water, there's no water, but the tanks have got water. That's, that's what it is. It's designed to stop the pump when it gets too low and start the pump, allow electricity to pass to the pump when it gets to a certain level. So that's the first line and that's all controlled via the box. Putting in the pressure switch now means that um, I can actually turn on a valve and it kicks the, the, the pump on automatically. So I know that the pump has just gone off, the sprinklers have gone out. So if we turn this on, no water, and then there you go, it's stronger. So it's a pretty good flow of water from this one. Turn it off, pressure will rise in the pump, and then turn the pump on. I've ran, I was saying that it's a one and a half inch out, in and out of the, the pump. I run a two inch to it, and then I reduce it down to a 1.5 to go through the pump and then a 1.5 to come out of the pump and almost instantly I increase it to two inches and the two inch line runs all the way it's my header bar that runs all the way and feeds everything okay so here's the first row <coughs> it's a bit difficult to get to the the uh, solenoid valve there so I'll show you the next one this is my next one here I went with flower boxes um, to cover my solenoid valves purely because we've got them and they are a lot cheaper than the standard uh, in-ground uh, solenoid box covers I think I could have got them for about five, seven, five to seven dollars or something like that. This little beast here cost me probably about 30 cents. So, of course, take a grinder, cut out a couple of notches, and it just covers over that valve, just like so. Right, so this is my valve. Um, all my sprinklers run on a one inch line. I have a two inch header reduced down to um, a one inch as it comes off and then it elbows almost instantly pretty much apart from about two centimeters and I then put in a union to make, make things easier to get this solenoid valve out and this is my solenoid valve now this little valve is a hunter. Hunter is quite easy to get here in Thailand. Uh, you can get the hunter sprinklers and that um, controllers, but I chose not to go with the hunter um, controller. I felt that it just didn't quite cut it to what I wanted. So, but the hunter solenoid valves are quite common. They are easy to get. They still aren't cheap. Um, what did I pay? I paid about. $22, $23 for each solenoid valve and I have uh, 10, 12, 10, I can't remember now, 10 or 12 um, running off of this. So it was quite a quite an investment that I had to put in here because they also are a one inch 
and one inch valves. Here we can turn the lines on manually. Um, it just says, gives a quarter turn and it'll come on. So we can turn them on like that and turn them off. But that's how that works. So, so guys, that's how I've set it up here. Um, Ratio, the system is pretty good. Um, I do like how it how it works. I get the the app. I've got the app on my phone. Um, I'm using an iPhone XS. Um, I set it all up. I put it on my phone. Um, I control it all from home or wherever I am. No problem at all. I set up the zones, set up the, the timings, the schedules and I bypass when we get too much rain. Um, my wife also has the app on her phone. She has the iPhone 7 and the, the account is linked. So she has full access to it. She can go in and change the, the zones and make adjustments to the timings. We are in Thailand, I understand that, and Racho say that they don't provide support. So far, they have been pretty good to us. They've helped us um, with a couple of issues. I have come across another major issue. I don't live in Thailand full time at the moment. I'm here because of um, the COVID pandemic. Um, I've been here now for close on six months this year already and I was here two weeks prior to that I was here for about four months as well so I've spent almost a year in Thailand um, it's probably about actually probably about nine months in total now um, I work in the UK I spend a lot of time in the UK and then I come back and see what she's doing and, and spend time here Normally I try and spend around six months of the year in Thailand. This is just the longest stretch because my work is um, not too suitable for working from home. Um, so I came back over here quickly just to spend time with my family. Why I'm saying this is because when I'm not here, I don't know what's going on with the weather. I don't speak to Nat. 24 hours a day she sends me a couple of messages in the day I send her messages back when I'm free so I don't know what's going on with the weather so the app was very very important to us to make sure this is why I went with the Ratio system so I can make sure that she has access and I have access as well I because I needed to set it up she because when I'm not here she's got to go in and turn the, the schedules off delay it turn it on when it needs to be done again, change timings, etc, etc. <coughs> now, Ratio have, um, the, the, the app has come up with a problem. Um, the app is not allowing her to see access to the schedules that have set. It's not showing any schedules, any zones or anything but she gets the messages and the notifications when a zone has been um, coming on and when it's gone off. She gets all that, she can see that, but she cannot get access to delay in the water. She cannot get access to change in the zones. Um, I certainly, I, I have highlighted the issue now to Ratio. They've been onto it for about two to three weeks and they are trying to figure out a problem. Um, other than that, everything is, I'm pretty happy with the system that, that, that Ratio is, is doing. Um, I cannot give a thumbs up or thumbs down to the service from Ratio at the moment because I'm waiting for them to fix that issue. I know they say in the, they don't provide service here or service support, but Ratio guys, please sort this out for me. Um, I am speaking to a lot of people to try and push the business here. They're asking me, all the customers are asking, a lot of other shops that we supply 
Um, we we do do wholesale stuff here as well. Supply a lot of the shops around here. They all ask about the sprinkler system and why I went with it. So, Racho guys, please, can you fix this little issue for me? Um, so that I can make sure that everyone has has a solution if they do decide to go with it as well. Um, well, guys, um, thanks for watching. Uh, you can check out all the other videos on uh, how I installed it um, on the, the channel. Um, everything else that we've been doing and, and how things have been going so far. But yeah, I look forward to seeing you guys um, on the next time. Well, thanks very much for now and see you later.